Let's bring in our next guest, Max Muncy of those Dodgers, joining us on FT Live. Max, what's going on? I don't know if you caught maybe the tail end of this, but we were just kicking around. Thoughts on how you guys – we'll get into the guys you did receive, which which is fun, and we talked to Kike the other day. But thoughts on the story with someone like Eduardo Rodriguez. We don't know everything going on in his personal life. He also has the right with the no-trade clause, but what was the reaction from you and the ball club to not get that you know last piece of the rotation that the Dodgers had agreed to on a trade? Um. Yeah, it was it was a little puzzling at first, but uh, you know we have a lot of guys on our team that know um, Eduardo, and um, you know we we kind of know a little bit of what's going on. Uh, that's not for me to say, obviously, but uh, you know that, that was his right to turn it down, and uh, you know that's that that's what he did. So we got to move on with the guys that we got, and we feel like we got a really good club over here. So let's go over what you did receive. So your thoughts, I don't know if you want to go player by player because you know some of them personally already. And if not, you're getting to know them. You guys made quite a few moves in terms of quantity. So what do you think? Well, yeah, we brought back uh, Kike. Obviously, he's a great clubhouse guy. He's been here in L.A. before. Um, you know, he fit right in. I think there was the video came out of the first day back on this team. He's dancing in the dugout, you know. he uh, It clearly took him a long time to adjust back to the Dodgers, um, <laughs> you know, and uh, – uh, we brought in uh, Ahmed Rosario, who kills lefties, and so far it's exactly what he's been doing for us in just a couple of games. Um, you know, we, we've we've always liked his game from the other side, and so to, to get him over here, it's, it'll be fun to play with him. And uh, you know, he he's fit well into the clubhouse right away too. You know, we've heard a lot of good things about him, and uh, so far it's been great. And you know, we brought over we brought back Joe. Uh, I don't think there needs to be anything else said about Joe. You know, he's he, he's he's great. He's nasty. He's going to do everything we need him to. And uh, he, he obviously fits great with the team and with the fans. They love him. And then uh, last night we got a good taste of what, uh, what Lance is going to give us. Hey, let me ask you this question about trades as well. Like when you hear your name getting thrown out there, then you hear maybe Arenado's coming, man. What goes on in your mind? You know, when you're talking with family members, do you ever like think about that? Or are you just like, ah, whatever, it is what it is? Well, it was uh, when when those rumors came out. It was a it was a, a rough day for the family. They uh, you know they kind of started freaking out a little bit. But uh, uh, you know a- Andrew Andrew pr- talked to me pretty much right away. And uh, uh, w- when those rumors came out, and he he told me the whole deal and he explained to me, and so we knew we weren't going anywhere. Um, you know, and that that kind of eases your mind a little bit when when uh, you know the, the the president's talking to you like that. So it's you know we we weren't too worried about it. How, how nice is it you can go talk to the president, though, and say, hey, Andrew, is this bullshit or what? Like, am I getting traded here? Like, what's going on? Like, I mean, you can walk into the president's office and say, hey, Andrew, am I getting traded? And he looks at you and says, no, Max, it's just rumors. But still, I mean, that's a pretty cool feeling as a player, right? Yeah, that's, you know, and that's one of the great things about this organization is we have that kind of transparency up and down, you know, from the manager to the GM to the president. You know, it, it's, it's a good relationship with everybody. Um, and I know sometimes it can make their job a little bit harder if they do have to move somebody, but at the same time, it could also make it easier because they can be straightforward and be like, Hey, here's what's going on. Here's what we think. Here's what might happen. Here's what won't happen. And everyone has a, you know, a clear head about it and it just kind of makes things a lot easier and smoother. And, you know, that's, that's something that I've always really loved about being over here with the Dodgers is hey, I can talk to Andrew about anything. And, you know, I know he's going to give me a straight answer. He's not going to, you know, give me some fake answer that's made up to, to make things easier. He's going to tell me exactly how it is. How does it always feel to be buyers though? Like every year you're in it. Like, how does that feel every year? Like we're going, we're going to get somebody. We know we're going to get somebody. You got Lynn, you got, I mean, plethora of guys like every year. I, I only had a couple years of that, unfortunately, but every year y'all are in it. Like, how does that feel? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, uh, you know, I talk Man. about it all the time and I talk about it all the time in spring training. Um, you know, every team has the beginning of the year speech saying, oh, our goal is to win the World Series, you know, yada, 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 whatever else they say. Well, over here, that's actually a reality. Every single year, the goal is to win a World Series and we're going to be in the playoffs every single year. And everyone just buys into it right away. And so it just it it, it, it makes it a lot of fun. You know, it's it this time of year is always uh, interesting for us. We see who we're going to add and. Um, you know, it's, it's been the same every year. It's been a lot of fun and uh, we always add pieces that make our team better. And sometimes it's not always a big splashy piece, but it's someone that comes in and immediately just makes our team, you know, complete. Talk to me about, um, 
seeing Lance Lynn uh, coming to the clubhouse, man. He's a specimen, isn't he? He's such a good dude. His energy as well, man. Talk to me about just seeing him for the first time, like up close and personal. Yeah, it was great. You know, he, he awesome dude. And, uh, you know, obviously I don't know what was going on over there in Chicago, but it kind of almost looked like there was a, uh, a couple of years added back to his life when he came into the clubhouse, you know, it was just, uh, I think a, a nice breath of fresh air for him. And so, uh, last night he went out and, and dealt pretty good for us. I know there was a couple solo home runs, but I thought he looked really good overall. And, you know, I know he's only going to continue to improve on that. Yeah. And you already saw a pretty significant change in like his pitching plans too, which I know the Dodgers do so well. So they, they were, I think Lance was ready to go with that. It's like, all right, let's talk through a strategy and a game plan here. Let's try and switch things up just a little bit. Cause he had already been starting to do that with the white Sox. But the other thing, of course, cause I watched almost all of that game. You're you've got like just a great seat for Lance. Just this is actually perfect to scream in cursing, doing his whole thing. So uh, how does that look up close and sound? And does it get you fired up? Oh, yeah, I love it. You know, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, whenever he was on the TV in the clubhouse, we'd always be watching, be like, oh, man, I hope he strikes this guy out. We can't wait to see what he does. <laughs> and, you know, it, it, to get to see it in person and to be on the same, the same team of, uh, as him doing it, it was a lot of fun. Hey, tell Lance, Max, he looks good in all white. No, he does not. Tell him, <laughs> tell him I said it brings That's me back rude, to when we played AJ. together. No, dude, listen, Lance and I have that relationship. I know. But it's like Max, right? He loves the Dodgers so much, he wears Dodger blue even at home when he's not playing. So he has the Dodger blue shirt on. So he, he went <laughs> up to Andrew and his Dodger blue. He's like, look, I don't want to go anywhere. I'm here. But go out with Lance, have some beers with him one time, Max, and just see what kind of guy he is. Because how many F-bombs did he drop last night? I mean, he grabbed his – he grabbed his nether regions a few times after strikeout, <laughs> and every and then he just goes. I mean, it's the best. He gra- he, he turns. He doesn't do it to the hitter. He turns around, does it, and then just goes fudge as loud as he can. I mean, he he's one of the best teammates I've ever had. Yeah, he was he was great last night, and uh, you know he's only been here a couple of days, but all the guys love him already, and uh, uh, you know I can't I can't wait to spend the next couple of months with him and uh, compete with him, and you know I, I think he's really going to love it over here. He's going to love what we're all about. Max, what did you think of the rest of the division in terms of the trade deadline, right? So you've got some pretty good competition going on right now um, with the Diamondbacks obviously playing pretty well this year. And they got a guy like Seawald and they got Pham. Um, the Padres have been underperforming, but they didn't sell, even though some, some people thought they would. So what did you think of like what the rest of the division did these last few days? Oh, you know, the, the Diamondbacks, they're, they're a very tough team. Um, they're very young. They have a ton of speed. Uh, they got great starting pitching. Um, you know, if they if they had a fault, it kind of felt like it was the bullpen. So them adding in, you know, Paul Seawald, that's a good addition for them. That definitely, you know, completes them a little bit. Um, with the Padres, you know, it, it just it, – it seems like they just keep adding people. Um, you know, it, it seems like they, they have a roster of 40 people over there. It, 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 we don't know how they're doing it, but, um, you know – Ultimately, at the end of the day, we can't be worrying about those teams that we just got to worry about ourselves and just go out there and play our game and and take care of business our way. Uh, w- one more, because I did, forgot to mention, because why would I when they didn't do anything? The Giants were completely silent. J- just obviously, I'm not going to have you like take me through their transactions and their team, but more from a player perspective of if you're a team that's they're currently in a, a wild card spot, right? Just like you're in a playoff spot and your front office added nothing for you would you be a little bit pissed at the front office? Like, I know you don't want to see any players on your own team go, but still, don't, you've been on enough winning teams. Don't you want to see somebody new come through the door so it shows that, you know, front office ownership, the whole deal, they're like, yeah, let's let's fucking go this year. Because almost every team that wins a World Series makes ads. Um, you know, I think it can, it can go one of two ways. It can either really piss guys off or it can give guys a confidence boost, you know. Cause that's something that we do a lot of times is instead of just adding people, we, we tell our young guys, Hey, you know, we think you're better than anyone out there, anyone else out there that we could add. That's why we're not making any moves. And so, you know, sometimes it can give those guys a real confidence boost and they, they'll be like, Oh, I'm here to help this team win. They, they want me, they need me. I need to go out there and perform and they go out there and start playing a whole lot better. Um, so it can go, you know, e- either way on that. And, you know, we've we've done that in the past where we haven't really added any names and it's given guys some confidence boosts and uh you know we've we've come out the second half and, and tore it up. So I'm looking on the schedule here. Your next twelve games out of those twelve games, 
the 10 of them are with teams under 500. Is it, it's basically go time here to kind of take off. Is there anybody in the clubhouse or anything that kind of steps up and says, hey, listen, you know, we're almost at the end of the year. These are these next 10, 12 games are, are big for us just to kind of separate ourselves a little bit. No, we just we take things one game at a time and we always, you know, we, we have all of our meetings and stuff. But we always say it doesn't matter who we're playing. You know, obviously it matters who the pitcher is so you can have a game plan, but it doesn't matter who you're playing. You got to go out there and play your game. You got to execute the things that you need to execute. Uh, you know, from the from the pitching side, you need to make your pitches defensively. You got to make plays offensively. You can't get out of your approach. You know, it doesn't matter what the other team is. If you go out there and just do those things every single day, you try to win every single pitch, then, you know, you got to trust the talent on your team. And for us, we feel pretty good that we're going to come out on top every single time as long as we execute our game plan. Man, Max, you are just you are just so like Dodger, Dodger, Dodger answer. It's great. I love it. OK, so you have two guys on your team. Freddie Freeman, Mookie Betts. They do the – have you done it yet? Well, there it is. Right? Yeah, I've, uh, <laughs> I think I've, I've done it a couple of times in Texas, yeah. Okay, and do your hips move? Who? I mean, Mookie, Mookie and Freddie kind of – Kike, obviously. Kershaw, I mean, Kershaw is more like me. He doesn't really have the rhythm down. But, <laughs> like, which one are you? Are you one of the good rhythm guys or are you a bad rhythm guy? I think the whole point of it is to make a little bit of a mockery out of it. So, you know, what, whatever you feel like looks the worst might be the best answer on that one. Um, <laughs> you know, because it was it was Freddie having a good time at the gala dancing uh, to Usher. And so, you know, obviously in that type of situation, it's not always going to be the most fluid. Uh, and so that's really the whole point is to kind of, you know, just make a mockery out of it. And Freddie, <laughs> Freddie's OK with you guys mocking him? In his oh, Louboutin, he, it, was, it, was, in his, it was his idea, I think. In his Louboutin, does he still wear the Louboutin sneakers every road trip with the spikes and all that stuff? Uh, on it? I have seen him wear those. He doesn't wear them every time, though. Okay, all right. He's graduated, so tell him congratulations for me when you see him. He signed a big ass contract, AJ. He can buy a few other pairs now, I think, True. too. No, True. No, True. Yeah, he used to, but he used to cut. So we used to get on him because we had Terry Pendleton and we had some older school guys, and one of the Braves' dress code was no sneakers. Uh, it's all changed now, obviously, but he would wear Louboutins with the spikes on it, and he'd come in, and Terry Pendleton would be like, dude, those are sneakers. And the rule was if you couldn't play basketball in them. So Freddie's like, I'm not playing basketball in these, so I can wear whatever I want. He's like, they have two-inch spikes on them, Terry. I'm going to spike you when I dunk on you. So it was like – it was the running joke with the Braves for a couple years. <laughs> yeah, Freddie loves telling that story. He, uh, You know, because they didn't have heels on them, and then they uh, – you can't play – they were tennis shoes. And so he likes to say that he, he couldn't play tennis in those. <laughs> <laughs> hey, are there any team rules like that the Dodgers have that are unique? I mean, not obviously the uh, Yankees facial hair policy, but at the, are, there, are there any things that like whether it's a team rule or just like the vets have where it's like, oh, you don't do that. Our guys last week were all over uh, Sal Free. Like we get a lot of Milwaukee Brewers on the show, too. And when he had his call up video, he was in the clubhouse. uh ripping through some spread with his shirt off and they were like telling all the the current brewers they were like don't let him do that in the current clubhouse they're like we don't want to nipple hair in our food um no i don't know that we have any unique team rules i mean obviously we keep it pretty loose over here and uh uh you know that's that that's always been our thing if you have too many rules rookies come up and they feel like they're they're so tight that they can't perform so we like them to feel comfortable um you know, it's it's really more just don't don't do anything that that's that's embarrassing to yourself or to the team. Um, you know, be yourself, but obviously, you know, keep it keep it keep it reined in a little bit. Uh, and I think it's it's hard for guys to get way too out of line when they, you come in and you see the way that Freddie or Kirsch or Mookie is handling themselves. You obviously don't want to do anything that they're not doing. And you know, when you have a full clubhouse of guys that are doing that kind of stuff, then it's pretty easy for the rookies to come in and see what's going on and just, just, just follow suit. Yeah. And I think Mookie feels the same way. So we had him on recently remember and and one of the parts that I thought that was pretty interesting was cause we didn't even totally go there, but he got into it on the Red Sox and how he left there. And he was like, I thought I'd be there forever. And he was like, I don't know, LA traffic, other side of the country. And he's like, actually, this is perfect. I'm so glad I ended up here. Do you feel that with Mookie? Like, especially I guess when he first came through, and now that he's been with the team for years, because, yeah, I mean, he had like this 
pretty genuine like smile and like kind of relief almost because it's such a different place too, Boston and LA. Yeah, I think I, I do think Mook loves it here. It's uh it, it fits him well, fits his lifestyle well. He's you know, he gets to do a whole bunch of stuff off the field and then obviously you get to come to Dodger Stadium every day and the fans love him and uh, you know, he's he's getting to play multiple positions, he's getting to, you know, do all sorts of stuff and I think it's it's been a very comfortable place for him and uh, on top of that he's he's getting to win. So, you know, it's hard it'd be hard for him to complain about it. Hey, Max, when you see Mookie today, I, I was there when Mookie first got called up. He wasn't up there for a week with the Red Sox, right? We're sitting in Fenway Park. It's before a game, probably 20 minutes before a game. A random guy is in the clubhouse, okay? He walks in, grabs a Bud Light or something out of the out of the cooler and is like <laughs> sitting at the table in the lunchroom and just <laughs> eating food. And we all look around and we're like, who the heck is this dude? It was like Mookie's cousin or something. He didn't have a week in the clubhouse. He didn't have a week in the big leagues. Mookie's literally cousins like, yeah, I'm comfortable. It's like, you know, 6 o'clock, 6.30 before a 7 o'clock game. So when you see Mookie, that's why Mookie makes everyone feel comfortable because he was comfortable the first day. Oh, well, yeah, that, that's funny because he, uh, he doesn't have anyone come in the clubhouse now. So he, 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 must, he must have learned. Um, you know, <laughs> if, if, if someone's coming in the clubhouse, it's, it's well after the game is over and everyone's kind of cleared out. So – uh you know i it, may, maybe he learned a little bit from that from from you from you guys uh calling him out on that but uh yeah he's he he, he does like to keep things comfortable and um you know i think it's a good thing we we as long as we're focused on winning i think that's the most important part if we're focused on other stuff um you know it, that was something that i thought i experienced a little bit with oakland i felt like guys were too focused on things that didn't matter instead of just winning the game and uh you know at the end of the day, that's what we're there to do is win. AJ, was that you? Did you provide some? No, I didn't. Comment to move. No, in? I did not. I, not at all. I promise. We had Lackey, Lester. Oh we yeah. Jo- Listen, we had Johnny Gomes on that team. Pedroia. <laughs> I was the guy that just sat in the back. D- David Ross. Trust me, they took care of it. I just was like, I didn't even. I'm like, I just like, who is this guy? And they're like, we don't know. And then when they found out, of course, it was like piranhas, man. <laughs> <laughs> Epic. All right, well, on that note, Max, great to see you. Enjoy the sunshine out there, dude, and we'll catch you again in a few weeks. All right, man, sounds great. Thanks for having me.